This is the plaintiff, Linda Quason. She says she lived in an apartment owned by the defendant for five years. And one day, the woman told her she needed to get out because she needed the apartment back. She complied and moved out, but the snake is keeping her security for no good reason. Now she's entitled to double the damages. That's right, the defendant should never have messed with her. She's suing for $950 and is confident the judge will side with her today. This is the defendant, Jennifer Coy. She says the plaintiff changed the master lock on the front door of her unit, effectively locking her out of the place she owns. There's a cost associated with correcting that problem. The plaintiff's assertion that she's due double damages is incorrect. And the woman simply owed nothing. She's accused of taking too much money. All parties, please raise your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says that she rented an apartment from the defendant for five years. In one day, the landlord just turned around and told her to get out. But the defendant says the woman changed the locks without giving her a key, effectively locking her out of the place she owns. And that's a no-no. It's the case of Goldilocks, as in, I want some gold for the locks. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. All right, Ms. Quayson, you are suing your former landlord, Ms. Coy, and TTK Real Estate Incorporated for double your deposit that you believe has been wrongfully withheld. Tell me what happened here. Okay, um, I got a letter from Ms. Coy, which she is the Ohio real estate attorney. Okay. Are you an attorney, Ms. Coy? I am. Um, the company is owned by my husband and okay. my father-in-law, so I, I just write the letters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For <laughs> That's fine. Go ahead, Ms. Quayson. Uh, okay, I moved in on August the 8th, first month of 2015, and I paid $475. Okay, and then her reply was, even though the walls and the carpet were severely soiled, we understand that some of this damage may be attributable to wear and tear. All right, this is the letter you're talking about? Yes. Even though the walls and carpet were severely soiled, we understand some of this may be attributable to wear and tear, but upon moving out, the main hallway walls were damaged and items were left. The hallway walls were patched and painted and left behind items were disposed of, and the cost to do so was $120. The apartment door locks were changed by the tenant. Did you change the apartment door locks? No, I did not. In fact, I have receipts where I lived there long enough to have changed the locks because I was trying to keep my uh, tenants out of my apartment. Your what? And I never, your, what do you mean your tenants? The people that lived with me. Your neighbors. In the, I mean, neighbors, neighbors okay. out of my apartment. And I, I never got compensated for none of that. And the last time I uh, actually did Why, that. Wait, hold on. What do you mean compensated for none of what? I don't know what you're saying for trying to fix his lock well, on I'm the sorry, door. was the lock broken? I don't know what you're saying. It had been broken and it had been patched and it never was fixed right. That's the reason why they still could come in my apartment whenever they wanted Who's to. Who's they, your neighbors? I, my neighbors, I'm pretty sure it was my neighbors. Okay, did you ever catch anybody in there? I never caught anybody in there. But did, you ever was, did you ever complain and say, I need you to fix the lock to the landlord? I, I complained it to the landlord. I called the police when I first moved in there because the first thing that walked was my computer. Someone stole your computer? My computer. Okay. So uh, so you, according to you, you asked the landlords to change the lock and make That's it a better... Several times. Okay. Several times. Did you ever do that in writing? No, I didn't do it in writing. We just communicated on the phone. Okay. They would say what when you would ask them to change a lock? The last time he told me when I paid $139 for a locksmith to come up there from, from Norwood, he told me that I could do whatever I needed to do to feel safe in my apartment. Who told you that? Mr. Uh, Kurt Rowley. Okay, is that the dad or your husband? My husband. Okay, all right. So part of the reason that you're withholding the security deposit is $180 to change the lock. And why would the tenant be responsible for that? Can you tell me, Ms. Coy? 
Why was it? Yeah, right. Why is it on her? Property was purchased in on May 16th of 2016, and all the locks are changed. There's a master key, and the reason is in case there's an emergency. For example, when Miss Quazen left her oven on, it almost burned down the place. Needed to have access, needed to be keyed to the master key. There was nothing wrong with her lock. It worked. No one had a key except for the landlord, TGK Real Estate, which would be my husband and father-in-law. And she, without the permission of the landlord, went and changed the lock and threw away the lock that was keyed with the master key. So when she moved out, there was no way, although we could access her apartment because she left you know, the new keys to the lock she had put in, it wasn't keyed to the master lock. So it costs $180 that. to change a cylinder? Uh, like, in other lock. words, do you have the, the receipt for that to show that it costs $180? I'm sure I could find it. Yes. Well, I mean, it I, I, I need evidence to for you to be, like, she's suing I you. Have, right, I'm going to need evidence. Yeah. You, of all people, should know because you're a lawyer. But I'm going to need evidence of the, the, you know, something that justifies keeping $180 for that. Um, the cost of patching the apartment walls. Do you have pictures of what you're talking about? So yes, first, tell me what you're well, talking about. First of all, let me apologize that my phone, my daughter dropped it in the bathtub, and so I no longer have the photos, but there were 16 holes that were left in the wall. But aren't the photos we uploaded started. to a cloud anywhere? Sure, I could try to find them, but I mean, they were just holes in the walls. We patched them. We had to repaint. The railing was knocked off when she moved Do you have out. a picture of the scared. railing knocked off? No, I didn't. They did not take pictures of that. They fixed it so it could get rented. Do you have any evidence at all to substantiate the damages that you withheld the money for? Any evidence at all? No. Did you even see that this stuff or you just sent the yes, letter? Because I personally saw it, yes. Ms. Quason, did you damage the railing that she's talking about? And so, no. no? And no. were there it's holes in the wall, Ms. Quason? There was nothing on the walls. You didn't hang up any paintings, nothing? Any pictures? I had, I had pictures, okay. but they were natural holes. I mean, you know. What, about, what are natural I, holes? <laughs> for pictures to be hung, the holes was natural. There wasn't no big holes in the wall or anything like that. If you have pictures, you want to show them to me right now? Hold them up. That's a picture of what? This is a picture of the front room. Okay. Did you, and, leave, and, did you leave any garbage behind? No garbage. That, that was another lie that Kurt probably said. Okay. Is your husband here to testify, Ms. Coy? No, he's not. Okay. How was it that you, as an attorney, were able to see the actual damages? I realize that's your family's business and stuff. It's but my husband and them. It, it's literally located. The property is a 16 unit. It's located about six minutes from my house. Okay. Go on, Ms. Quayson. Okay. And this is the refrigerator. And actually, my daughter-in-law's a professional cleaner. She, she did a lot of this, which I thought was ridiculous, the way she cleaned it, the way Kurt treated me while I lived there. How did he treat you I while you lived there? He was a dog towards me. How he was he a dog like towards a dog. you? Okay, we have a ceiling in the back in my bedroom that was like eight feet tall. And the light bulb went out, which is up in the ceiling. I asked him to come over there and change to get somebody to change the light bulb. We don't change light bulbs. Uh, did you read your contract? Con uh, track? My contract didn't say anything about you can't change the light bulb. And then I asked him, I said, did you realize you sold, you rented your apartment to a senior? <laughs> okay. It's all senior. But why living. can't you change a light bulb? Because it's eight feet in the air. I'm not that tall. I know you're not. But like, the rest of us, when we change a light bulb, we might get a ladder or a step stool or something. I have a step stool, but it's not high enough to change a light okay. that's eight feet Because normally landlords don't go to your house to change a light bulb. I need you to know that. Oh, I know. But he has, he has maintenance. Okay. How long were you living there? Five years. Okay. And were you surprised that they asked you to leave? I was, because I called him and asked him why, and he didn't answer the phone. And I think it was her that called me and told me that he wanted to uh, renovate the apartment or something. Okay, and let me ask you, Ms. Coy, why was it you didn't want to, um, or your family didn't want to renew her lease? The reason we did not want to move her lease is because in April of 2021, she changed the locks without the permission of the landlord. 
She left her stove on and smoke was coming out and we had to break the door down because she didn't even give us a key to turn the stove off. It was a safety hazard. Other tenants, we had at least three tenants that complained. How did you know that the stove was on? They were of stealing her laundry quarters. I don't even know. We it was a month among tenancy. We just decided to amicably end it. We didn't need to feel the need to give her a reason. Um, the month to month, we just said it was on September fifteenth of twenty twenty one. We let her know that her lease would not be renewed at the end of October. Okay. And I sent her the letter explaining the damages on November 15th. Right. Here's the problem, though. OK, first of all, Ms. Quayson, you're suing for double damages because um, you live in a state that allows double damages. But every st the states that say double damages are states that are trying to punish landlords for certain conduct. OK, some of them punish a the landlord for being wrong, like just if they're wrong then you're entitled to double the amount wrongfully withheld if it turns out that a judge thinks that they're wrong. Those are the most severe states against a landlord. Your state is, we're going to punish you, landlord, if you don't send a letter and state where you are and why you're doing it. They sent the letter in the required time, so they didn't violate you know, the double clause. They didn't send me a letter. They did not send me a letter. All this was <laughs> over the phone. Didn't you just read me the letter? This letter is after I moved out. Well, of course it's after you moved out. How could it be before you moved out? Can't be before you moved out. Okay, it's about the damages and the security. No, before that happened like two years ago. That didn't have anything We're, to do with this. Okay, no, you're not understanding me. They sent the letter that, that so this isn't a double security case. Now, having said that, Ms. Coy, you have to understand that if you're going to take a, a, a tenant's um, security, you have to back it up with pictures. And if you took pictures and you couldn't find the pictures for court today, that's on you. It's not on her. Because I need to have, I need to assess whether we're talking about a few little holes, a thousand holes. I need to see the damage that you're talking. No, I, I need you to listen. I can't just have people's flapping gums. I need to have evidence of how it was left that would justify you keeping such a major portion of the security deposit. It's so simple. Whenever a landlord has decided they're going to keep money, they need to have those pictures attached to that file somewhere so that this issue doesn't come up and you don't lose them on your cell phone by accident or whatever else. But of course, you know, these things are obtainable uh, usually even if you've wet your cell phone. But the bottom line is that I need to have some evidence of the damages that you're talking about, including a receipt. How about a receipt? for? Because I kind of agree with you that she doesn't have the right to change the lock uh, unless she's right and she was told to go ahead and change the lock. If you have a master key system, I doubt someone told her that. So I, I get what you're saying. But how about a receipt that shows me how much the lock costs? You can't even give me that? I mean, most of the work was done by my father-in-law. So there's not receipts to back that up because that is time and effort. And we use standard market rates to actually do that. They sent you a check for what, Ms. Uh, Quayson? For 70, I mean, $75. Okay. The security deposit was $475. They sent you a check for $75? Exactly. All right. Did you end up cashing that or no? No, I still have it. Okay. Right here. And when, can I ask you something? Uh, uh, what happened with the stove, Ms. Quayson? That was two years ago, and that was, um, I had left a pot on the stove. And? And I had, and when I realized that it was on, I came right back to the, uh, to my apartment, and they had already been in and did whatever they was going to do. Well, you didn't realize it right away then, because the landlords were called over to the building, because I guess they were smelling the fire? Was there a fire right. or what happened, Ms. Coy? No, Just smoke it was is my understanding. The other tenants were smelling smoke and we got called. Okay. And so why didn't, if you realized that day that she had locked you out, how come uh, your your family company didn't correct We asked her to change the lock back. She just proceeded then to um, complain about having to pay for the cost to fix the door. And she never put the original locks back. I guess she threw them away. What did you do with the original locks, Ms. Quayson? I don't know. I might have thrown them away. Okay. All right. I'm going to allow you to keep $100 on the lock issue. You don't have any proof on anything else. I'm going to order you to return $375. Verdict for the plaintiff. Thank you. 
So the plaintiff prevails. She's going to get $375 less. She doesn't get double, which is what she was hoping for. Uh, let's talk to the defendant. Ms. Coy, I know you're the, you know, your, your husband or your father-in-law handled most of this stuff. But anyway, you're, you're the testimony here in court. What do you think about the outcome of this case? What, what do you feel about that judgment by the uh, judge? Yes, we should have given some receipts, but I think it's ridiculous. Whatever. Well, it's not ridiculous. You're in court and you didn't have enough evidence to uh, support your claim. So hope you guys have learned something here. Ms. Quayson? If, if, if it only cost $100 for the lots, why didn't I get $875 back? Because you were suing for double. You don't get the double back. All right. Listen, you prevailed in the loss. Congratulations. You should be somewhat That's happy. It. Smile for I me. Am. Smile. Okay. I'm smiling. <laughs> okay. All right. Bye bye. All right. That'll wrap it up for this case. Here's Harvey. Okay, Doug, sorry for sounding like a broken record, but this is super important that when you move into a place, if you're a tenant, take pictures. If you're the landlord, take pictures when the tenant moves in. When the tenant moves out, both take pictures. That will establish what was damaged, what was not damaged, what is normal wear and tear. That will cement your rights. Do you pay your parking tickets or take it to court? <laughs> well, I mean, if I have a defense, I take it to court. Actually, I don't take it to court. I send my husband to take That's it to court. Right. And I'd just like to point out I'm batting a thousand. Right. And one for one on parking tickets for you. Right. right. And I had a very good defense then. Well, uh, actually, maybe not, because what were your opening words to the court? They, well, the, the judge said, do you have a defense? And I said, um, I have a defense. It's not a good defense, but it's my wife's defense. <laughs> <laughs> I started to explain it. And I kind of had a defense to so that. Felt, it had something yeah, to do with the machinery. Yeah, defense. All right. But I, uh, and I, he felt sorry for me, I think. He just looked at me yeah, and Yeah, because your wife sent I you. I don't know how you're going to win here. You're, you're representing your wife on the ticket. Good God. He goes, I'm going to dismiss it. <laughs> he dismissed it. That's going to do it for us now, and we will see you for the next session of the People's Court.